What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video back here today on NBA 2k 25 once again and we're also back in the Steph era no surprise there we're going to be doing the Minnesota Timberwolves today this is back when they had Wiggins Levine this is before they traded for Jimmy Butler so just go ahead jump in and do this new era or sorry not new era it is the Stephen Curry era Timberwolves rebuild before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you're new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciate it. I'm very excited about this one today. It should be a ton of fun because, of course, this team ends up making the move for Jim Butler this upcoming draft today. We won't do that. Instead, we'll probably keep Cat, Wiggins, Zach Levine all together than whoever we draft to add on top of what this young Minnesota team has. So, uh, very exciting. Got Chris Dunn as well, uh, Tyus Jones, Brandon Rush, uh, Jordan Hill, Adrian Payne down here. So we're going to go ahead and just get straight in this rotation. So it'll be Ricky Rubio, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Gorgie Ding, Carthy Towns, Chris Dunn, Tyus Jones, Brandon Rush, and Jordan Hill as a rotation. Clearly, there's some things we need to address to upgrade this roster. But for now, we're just going to simply, uh, simply simulate this season, see how we do. I low-key wouldn't mind if we're bad. That way, we have a lottery pick to add to this young core that we already got going on here. So... We'll see how it goes. I'm excited. I'm optimistic. If we look at a proficiency, we're three and a half under Tom Thibodeau. So let's go ahead, same way to the end of year number one with this Minnesota squad, and let's see how they do in year one. Today's video is brought to you by two softwares designed to help you beat the sports books and become a much profitable sports better. We're starting on Daily Grind Fantasy's Optimizer. So, how this works on Prize Picks, you compare discrepancies across multiple sports books, you can do it on Prize Picks, Underdog, Better, all kinds of other um, uh, DFS options on this site as well so as you can see you do have some bills uh value right now so over two and a half on keon coleman obviously he came away with last game with zero receptions but they are favoring for him to go over two and a half uh on this upcoming game for the bills and the same thing with dalton kincaid which i like to see from my fantasy team I need this guy to start popping off but i do like to see that there's value on two bills wide receivers uh you got rashad bateman under two and a half receptions and that is about uh, you got some other things as well, but once you start to get, you know, down here a little bit, the value starts to, I mean, there's still some good plays. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Tyreek Hill under 70 and a half receiving yards. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of discrepancies here. You got some books listing at 65 and a half. You got one other book at 70 and a half, but heavily juiced on the under clearly with no two. Uh, that's going to definitely affect Tyreek's value, obviously. Uh, so that's why books looks like they're kind of favoring his under right now, which really sucks. Uh, and then going over to Oz Jam's positive VV tool. I really love this tool as well because it focuses on traditional sports books such as FanDuel, BetMGM. Uh, I have locked in a couple of plays that I see on the board right now. So Brandon Ayuk over 64 and a half receiving yards at minus 115. The reason why we like this is, as you can see, you got one of the sharpest books in the world, Pinnacle at minus 138. DraftKings at minus 145. Fanatics minus 145. Uh, Caesars minus 135. So we're getting this at minus 115. Same thing over with this Mike Evans play over four and a half receptions on BetMGM plus 110. I didn't see you got FanDuel at minus 120, Bet Pinnacle at minus 120, no Vig at minus 118, minus 115. So clearly there's great value. Bet MGM is literally the only book offering you plus money on this play at over four and a half receptions, which is why we took it. Uh, and we found that play within two seconds on OzGM's positive EV tool. And last but certainly not least, make sure to check out Prize Picks as well. I've been running constant promos when the, with the NFL season. Gil Williams is a free square once again. That is free money to take advantage of. So make sure you guys check out all of these. All links are down in the description below. Use code CRASHBULLS for the software. You get a percentage off your first month. And on price picks, you get your first deposit match up to $100. Other than that, let's get back to the video. So at the end of year number one, LeBron James went to MVP. Of course, Blake Griffin's not actually a rookie. And you guys have been pointing that out. But there's only really one way to get him in this uh, you know, 2K era thing. The Steph era is not actually in it in 2K. So you have to customly add him. And unfortunately, he is a rookie because you add him customly now i did fix his age it says he was like 20 i made him 27 i think that's right around the age he was um back at this time and same thing with Igadua, uh, igadala i've noticed that he's been 20 for quite some time he clearly was not 20 years old at this time so i did bump his age as well so i'll try to remember to do that each time we do a video on this so uh and then draymond was defensive player nicole yogish most improved okay so all be a first team russell westbrook Harden, lebron ad I don't think we're going to have any All-NBA representatives, unfortunately. So, first season, we do not make the playoffs, which I'm totally okay with. Because, like I said, I really wanted to have a lottery pick to add to this young core. So, Wiggins with 19. Cat with 26 and a half, 13, which is nice. 12 from Zach Levine. 9 from Tyus Jones. 8 from Ricky Rubio. 8 from Jordan Hill. There's already a lot of solid pieces here, I'm not going to lie. So, like, Gorgie Dang is a backup 5 going forward. I think is solid. 
uh, having Tyus Jones, the backup point guard is fantastic. Rubio still uh, only 26 at this time as well. So like, there's a lot to like here. So let's go ahead, some of the playoffs and let's see how these go and let's see what lottery pick we're gonna end up with. So we got the Raptors beating the Golden State Warriors. DeRozan finally gets a championship with Toronto. Shout out to DeRozan. Uh, here are your retirements that uh, we've seen quite a few times already. Uh, but let's go to the lottery. So draft lottery time, obviously this is gonna be important for us. We are projected pick number 11, so we don't really have a chance at number one, unfortunately. That would be cool if we did. But we do know we'll walk away with at least a decent player here because we kind of know who ends up becoming good in real life. And we are going to draw uh, number 11. So we do not move up or anything like that. Uh, Phoenix gets number one, LA number two, and then Magic number three. Okay. I could attempt to trade up in this draft. Like, that could be interesting. Uh, as far as, like, what position I want the most, I guess, it's probably maybe, like, the power forward spot or josh jackson holy moly i forgot about josh jackson uh just tatum would be awesome uh but i don't think we're gonna be in his territory obviously uh we could bring in Lloyd marketing again and this time not trade him to uh you know obviously trade him to uh chicago so we could do that he was originally drafted in minnesota was in the jimmy butler trade so i will keep tom thibodeau around and now we can go straight to draft night and I don't know. I might try to move up. We'll see. Let's see what kind of assets I got going on. So number 11, like what pick would I want to move up to if I did move up is the question. So if we look at mock drafts. Let's see what we're projected to get. So right now, mock drafts have us drafting like John Collins or uh, Lonzo. He's even projected to fall this far. OG, you got uh, Derek White down here. So um, what team would it be? You know, maybe I can move up to like number seven with Detroit. Maybe do something with them. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to see if I can move up to like number seven, just to give myself a little bit more of a chance to get one of the guys I want. Now, obviously, I got to turn off the stepping rule really quickly. Hold on. So let me do that. So that way I can make this trade. Uh, did I just not turn it off? Did I just like fail turning that off? I sure. Oh, yeah, because you have to click the A button this time. So we're going to go try to do something with this pick. So number 11 for number seven from Detroit. Let's see if I can get them to agree to anything. So um i'm gonna offer them let's offer some of the crap that we have down here and then we have chris dunn who i low-key wouldn't mind offering but uh george dang i wouldn't mind offering as well i was kind of you know happy about having him as a backup five but if it helps us move up i might do it jordan hill i can offer uh offer my second it doesn't look like we have our pick next year so i got to keep that in mind so we're moving up let's see what they say to this they don't agree this is kind of a crappy trade so i don't really blame them for Find that right away. What about Adrian Payne? Does that do it for you? It does. Okay. That was one of the most crappiest move up hauls I've ever seen, but hey, it worked out. So let's see who drops to us at number seven. So number one is going to be Jason Tatum to Phoenix. Okay. Number two is going to be Donovan Mitchell to LA. Number three is going to be Lonzo Ball to Orlando. Number four, TJ Leaf. Why does he go number four? I have no idea. Uh, that is, uh, you know, I remember him being in Indiana and then he played for Portland for like a two seconds, I think. Luke Kennard to Philly. You got Mark Hill Fultz. Okay. So we have the option between. I mean, we got Darren Fox on the board. We got Jonathan Isaac on the board. Frank Nelkina, Dennis Smith, Bam my bio, Lori Marketing, like I mentioned. But I think I would be kind of goofy if I didn't take Darren Fox here. I mean, he's clearly the best player available. Uh, you got Dennis Smith as well. I mean, that's not obviously he doesn't end up becoming anything too crazy. He's a solid backup point guard nowadays. Kuzma is on the board. Yeah, but clearly, I think trading up to number seven was awesome for us because we walk away with Darren Fox of this draft. We did get him in the Kings video as well, funny enough, uh, but we have the opportunity to draft him again. We get to add De'Aaron Fox with Wiggins, Carnegie Towns, sign me up for that. So welcome to Minnesota, De'Aaron Fox. I'm very excited about that. So 76 overall out of this draft. Uh, yeah, a lot to be excited about there. So welcome to Minnesota. Player options, you got uh, Darren Lee that I'm going to decline. We're going to accept Tyus Jones, Levine, Wiggins, and Carnegie Towns. Uh, qualifying offers, nothing going on there. And then free agency. So... For free agency, we do have uh, no free agents to worry about. Okay, so do we have money? We do have a little bit of money. Actually, we have a lot of money. We could sign like Dwayne Wade if we wanted to. We could sign Iguodala, Serge Ibaka, Pau Gasol is here. All right, so let's see what we got. We got Ricky Rubio, Darren Fox, and Chris Dunn, and Tyus Jones. So we definitely have a lot of different point guard, but you know, Darren Fox was the best player available. So I do not hate the trade that we made at all. So like, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, shooting guard Levine, we can see a small forward. Uh, and then we got Gorgie Dang and Aldridge as our center rotation. So with the amount of point guards that we have, I'm low key kind of tempted to make a trade. Like I think for a power forward, I mean, we could just sign it though as well, to be fair. So let's see what power forward we could sign if we just go that direction. So we could sign like a Serge Ibaka to add to the team next to 
haunted towns. I don't hate that. That's not terrible. But I do want to see what my options are because we clearly are going to have to potentially break up this log jam at point guard because we're not going to play all four of these guys at point guard. And to me, all of them are natural point guards. I don't really see either one of these guys playing shooting guard for us. I think Ricky Rubio is more of a point guard. Dunn, same thing. Uh, you know, Tyus Jones, clearly a point guard. I mean, you could maybe get away with moving Tyus or Chris Dunn to shooting guard. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I guess if we move to shooting guard, you stay the same overall. But I do prefer if, you know, they were playing point guard rather than playing shooting guard, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to go see what the value is. Or I'm going to see if I can maybe move for a power forward to add next to Cat and Wiggins uh, in the front court. So the power forward I'm trying to land is off the Orlando Magic. You guys may know him. Aaron Gordon, obviously a pivotal part to the Nuggets championship when they did win. I want to see if I can add him to this core. He will have to be paid next year, but I do think he'd be a really good fit uh, on this team. He's not going to have to score a whole bunch. We got plenty of scoring as it is. We got some spacing with Carly Towns. So I do think this could work out. So I'm going to offer Chris Dunn for Aaron Gordon straight up. They're going to say no to that, obviously. I will offer you Cole Aldridge as well as a little sweetener. They still say no. Let me offer a second and another second and they still are saying no they're not down for this trade okay what if i offer um what if i offer ricky rubio as well i don't know if they have enough money for this but obviously ricky rubio is someone i'm fine with moving because we got a point rotation as is so chris dunn call aldridge and rubio for aaron gordon uh they don't agree to that okay what if i throw in those two seconds maybe they say yes to this and they do agree so we do get aaron gordon so we free up the point guard log jam that we had kind of going on obviously we're rolling forward with Darren Fox and Tyus Jones those are the two better point guards in my opinion we'll take them Levine so the shooting guard Wiggins Aaron Gordon and then Carnegie Towns and Gorgie Dang and that freed up a little bit of money so we can kind of focus on building this bench up so now we just need to sign uh some wings so shooting guard small forward power forwards we're going to be focused on so uh we pretty much have our really nice you know I really like what we got going on here so let's see what else we can add to this team so as shooting guard uh, I don't know how much cash space we have exact. Oh, we got a ton. Holy moly. We could build out a damn good bench. So uh, you got Jeremy Lamb here, Justin Holiday. Uh, we got what else we got? Iguodala bringing him off the bench might be kind of nasty. I do kind of like the idea of signing like a vet Iguodala to come off this bench. I don't hate that idea at all. Uh, Serge Ibaka, Zach Randolph, uh, we got Henry Ellidson, Michael Beasley, Derek Williams uh centers you got like javel mcgee soldier so we do have our backup center although we could move gorgie dang so i do like that i'm gonna move gorgie dang to power forward i'm gonna sign mason plumley because i do like plumley really nicely as a backup five uh so we're gonna sign him and then we are going to sign i think i'm gonna sign iggy man i really do like the idea of bringing iggy off this bench in minnesota i'm only gonna give him like a two-year deal though but i do like the idea of him kind of being like a six man like he kind of was for the golden state warriors so uh plumley and uh Iguodala, i think is a great way to start this off season so we're gonna do that so we'll have those two, which is nice. And now we can move Gorgie Dane to power forward because he'll be our, you know, or sorry, not Plumley. We'll move Gorgie Dane to the power forward. So he'll play power forward for us. Uh, and he'll be, you know, kind of a nice little backup power forward to Aaron Gordon. So that's great. Iguodala will back up Wiggins. We'll have Gorgie Dane, Gordon, Carnegie Towns, Plumley. So the only thing we really need now is a backup shooting guard. We really wanted to. And KCP clearly is the best player. I do like the idea of maybe having an event in Kyle Corver who could shoot the lights out of the ball. So you know what? Give me Kyle Corver. Uh, we have, you know, had a lot more cast space. We could have signed like a KCP, but I've gotten them in a few videos already. So I like, I like this off season a lot. So player progression, you do have Igu Iguodala going down, which is why I didn't like give him too much money, but you got, uh, you know, Levine progressing. You got Wiggins are progressing. Carly Towns progressing, which is great. And then Kyle Corver went down as well. You're bringing a couple vets, but they won't be relying on, which is kind of what the goal was, uh, to build a bench that I think will complement our young pieces. Uh, be some mentors and i think next year we could definitely be a playoff team i definitely think that's in the realm of possibility i'm excited i'm excited about this next season so let's load this 2018 draft class and let's get straight into it and look at the rotation all together i'm excited let's get into it so pairing is going to last eighth overall proficiency is three and a half under tom thibodeau and here is your rotation so it's tyus jones uh, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Gorgie Dang, Carnegie Towns, Iguodala, Aaron Gordon, Mason Plumley, and Darren Fox. So I do have a problem with this. I don't really like the idea of, you know, Tyus Jones starting. I'm going to start Darren Fox right away. So we're going to do that. Darren Fox is going to start right away. And we're also going to start Aaron Gordon as well. So I think that is also going to be what we do here. So Aaron Gordon is going to start. So we're going to do something like this. And that is what we'll roll with. So I might even give some minutes taken away from here. 
to give some more minutes to like Darren Fox playing right away. Give some more minutes to Aaron Gordon. Just something along the lines of that is what I want to roll with going into this season. Okay. That should give us a really nice team going to this year. I guess proficiency goes down by putting in Darren Fox, but I don't care. He's our young point guard. We're trying to develop shot tendencies. Let's see what they are looking like. So Katz is a 95. Wiggins is 86. Levine is a 79. Darren Fox of the draft is only a 57 shot tendency. That is a joke. Let's fix that. So Darren Fox shot tendency. I'm going to push that up to like an 80. I really want this man to take some shots as well, of course. So let's simulate this season and let's see how this team does. So at the end of year number two, we do in fact make the playoffs, which I kind of figured would happen with the amount of talent we added in the offseason along with the young core that we had, which is great. So all of your first team goes to Russell Westbrook, Harden, LeBron, AD, and Marcus Cousins. So here's your all NBA second team, all NBA third team, all defensive first team, and all defensive second team. So here's your all rookies as well. Darren Fox makes it. He averaged 14 and a half points per game out of his rookie season. Love to see that. And we are the fourth seed in the West going against Denver. So if you look at the player stats, uh, I clicked Y again on accident. That is a habit that I still have not broken at this point. So here are your player stats. So yeah, 21 and a half from Cat, 14 and a half from Deer and Fox, 14 from Wiggins, and 14 from Levine. So plenty of scoring options on this team, which is awesome. Iggy with 11 off the bench, 9 from Aaron Gordon, 8 from Plumley, 6 from Gorgie Dang, and a 5 and 3 from Tyus Jones. And Kyle Corver even chipped in 4 points as well. Okay, I'm going to go into these playoffs. We're going to run a nine minute rotation and we're also going to shrink the bench utilization down quite a bit. So let's go down to like 49. So that does make them want to put in Tyus Jones. They want to put in Gorgie Dang. I guess that's the best they want to run with. I don't know if I agree with that, but whatever. So Fox and uh, Aaron Gordon hit the bench. I don't know. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. So we get Denver in round one. Moody, Jamal Murray, Kenneth Fareed, Wilson Chandler, Jokic, of course, Gary Harris, Gallinari, and Nurkic. So Somebody come around against Denver, and we are going to go down three to zero. So we are going to lose this series entirely. So we lose that one, and now I got to get into the offseason once again. So hey, at least we made it though, right? San Antonio is going to beat the Cavs in seven. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard, Dirk Nowitzki, Paul Pierce are calling it a career, and now we can go to the lottery. And well, this year it's not going to affect us. I think our pick is going somewhere else. So yeah, Atlanta gets our pick, and you know, whenever this happens, I try to remember what that trade could have been from. And at the top of my head, I cannot remember why Atlanta has Minnesota's pick right now, according to 2K. Like, why is that a thing? Maybe I can go find it on the Hawks roster. Like, is there anybody that Minnesota used to have here? Um, I mean, didn't Anthony Tolver play for Minnesota? But I don't think that has anything to do with it, I imagine. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they have our pick, but I'll leave it that, you know, leave it being like that. So we did make the playoffs last year with Tom Thibodeau, so... I'm cool with keeping them around. Now we can go to uh, player options. We didn't have a draft pick. So, Carnegie Towns, Sash Jones, of course, no brainer. Uh, so, Zach Levine and Wiggins are going to have to be paid along with Gordon. So, we are about to spend a lot of money this offseason. So, let's go ahead and get straight to it. So, Zach Levine, Wiggins, and Aaron Gordon literally just signing all three of them back. So, bringing them all back, bringing them around town. So, bring them back, and now we can go ahead and i mean we could look at other avenues so i think i might trade iggy this off season just because i mean it's probably gonna regress even more so let's start there so let's trade iguodala for whatever we can get so iguodala could send him wherever and we can just get any kind of return so isaac and robin lopez we'd have to move tyus jones jar smith not bad ron hellish jefferson marcus smart i don't mind this we do have to trade a first to do this though uh marcus smart obviously would be a really nice role player to bring in i don't want to trade tyus jones to be honest with you so Winslow, uh, Rudy Gay, Zubach, Bismack, Gordon Finney Smith on the first. Uh, what else we got? JaVel McGee and Trevor Reza is not bad either. Uh, two first in a scanter. But honestly, I do think that this trade could be worth our. I mean, I do like this one as well, getting Isaac off the bench. Robin Lopez, I don't care as much about. I think Ron Ellis Jefferson and Mark Smart, though, could be really beneficial. So I'm going to do this trade. I'm going to see if I can do without a first round pick. I don't know if this can even be possible. I mean, we're going to have to trade the first, I think. You know what? We're getting Marcus Mart, Ron Ellis Jefferson. I guess I'll just make it happen. So we're going all in on this roster even more. So Ron Ellis Jefferson is going to come over and replace uh, Iguodala. And we get Marcus Smart, who will probably be our new backup shooting guard. So Iguodala, thank you for your services. Marcus Smart will come be our backup shooting guard. He doesn't progress at all. I noticed in this file, which kind of sucks, but he's still going to be a solid role player nonetheless. Uh, so that's great. And we kind of have a four rotation. So I don't think we need to do anything in uh, free agency. So all we really need to hope for is guys are developing. So, and that is exactly what's happening. Levine is up to an age six. 
We got Aaron Gordon up to an 82. Fox is up to an 81 of five overall. Ron Ellis Jefferson's good and Tyus Jones are good. So if this offseason wouldn't have gone progression, you know, if they wouldn't have progressed, we definitely would have been in trouble. But as you can see, there is plenty, plenty of progression going on with this Minnesota squad. So we should be chilling. So we're about to go into year three. It's going to be a little bit of a different rotation. I think clearly 2K will make it to where I think Fox and Gordon will start no matter what. I can't imagine there'd be any reason not to start either of them. I get Tyus Jones is solid, but I think Darren Fox and Gordon should be the starters on this squad. So let's load this draft class and let's get straight into next season. And proficiency is three and a half under Tom Thibodeau. And I assume the starting five will be what I think it is. So yeah, it's Fox, Levine, Wiggins, Gordon, Cardi Towns. So that's a really, really rock solid starting five with Ronnie Hell, Jefferson off the bench, Tyus Jones, Mason Plumley, and Gorgie Dang. I'm I, I'm I'm pumped. I think this is gonna be a very good team. We just made the playoffs last year. We got absolutely swept, but I think this year it wouldn't shock me whatsoever. Uh, as we start off 0-2 or 0-1, but uh, I do think our record's only gonna get better. But I was going to say, wouldn't shock me if we somehow got the first seed in the West. Like, I think we could be that good. So at the end of year number three, Russell Westbrook is your MVP. Luke is your rookie of the year. Josh Jackson, six man in a Knicks uniform. And here are your coach of the year and executive of the year. So all NBA first team, Russell Westbrook in Brooklyn. Here's your all NBA second team and all NBA third team. We do get Carly Towns making it, which is awesome. And that's about it. So all offensive first team and all defensive second team. Love to see what I'm seeing. So we end up as the second seed in the Western Conference. If you take a look at the player stats, you had 22 from Carly Towns, 21 from uh, Zach Levine, 18 from Wiggins, 13 from Darren Fox, 11 from Gordon, 10 from Ron Ellis Jefferson, 8 from Tyus Jones, and 6 from Pumley, and then 4 from Gorgie Dang. All around, really solid stuff. And now we get to see if we can come out here and win a first round series and get to round two. So we get Sacramento this time around. Of course, DeMarcus Cousins is great. But I do love our matchup with Carnegie Towns versus Marcus Cousins. And I do believe with the you know team we have, we should move on to the next round. So somebody could around against Sacramento and we are going to beat them in four. No sweat there. But now we get San Antonio, who just won a championship last year. Frank Kaminsky looks nothing like that. But uh, here he is anyway, 13 and 11. I mean, the man's a freaking stud, I guess. Uh, Aldridge with, uh, you know, Stone 86 averaging 12 and then. Wise averaging 28, of course, with 54% shooting from three. All right, here goes nothing. Game one is going to go to us. Game two is going to go to us. Game three goes to us. And are we just going to sweep the Spurs like that? Or are they going to come back? No, we beat them in five. Okay. So, so far, we have just done fantastic on our side of the bracket. But now it's time to face off against Denver or Phoenix. It is going to be Denver. So, Denver swept us last year. So, I would love to return the favor and sweep them. I doubt we, I doubt we sweep them, obviously. But... I do believe we have a chance to win this series. Like last year, they beat us really badly, but let's see what happens. So game one goes to us, win by one in Denver. We win both games in Denver, kind of like Minnesota did in real life this past season. Uh, and are they going to return the favor at Minnesota? Yeah, wow. This series is going exactly how things went last time. All right, so let's see if we can simcast game five and not let them go up three to two. So let's see if we can go up three to two. I would love to beat Denver this, er uh, this early here and... So far, I, th I, I believe I'm, yeah, Denver won get three in a row, right? And then Minnesota won the next two, I think is how it went, if I remember correctly. Well, let's see if we can do that. Let's, let's uh, you know, kind of replicate real life if we can come out here and win this game five or game six, rather. Uh, but it looks like they've had to lead most of the game and it looks like they will keep it. So Denver is our kryptonite at the moment. We make it to the conference finals. They beat us and it's going to be Denver going on to win it all. So Jokic is that dude. But one thing we have going for us is this team is only about to get better. Like Darren Fox is about to turn into a whole different animal this off season. So um, I'm not really too worried about anything that I just saw. I think we'll be just fine. I believe our pick is going somewhere else because we traded it. Obviously uh, Tom Thibodeau, if we could bring him back, I probably will considering we just made it to the playoffs into the conference finals. And you know what? You know, we lost in the six disappointingly, but I think Tom Thibodeau has done a great job. So we'll keep him around, go straight to player options. And I mean, I don't think this team is about to change this much this offseason, if I'm completely honest with you. So we do have to resign a lot of guys. This team is getting expensive, but I do believe we're right on the verge of winning a championship. So I have no problem. I know Minnesota would probably have a problem with paying this much money. I don't think they're a luxury tax paying team usually. Uh, so they're probably, you know, a little upset about how much money we're spending. But hey, man, if we get a championship, does it really matter at the end of the day? So Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. 
I guess we're only gonna be able to get him back as qualifying offer, I assume, because we're not able to pay him. I think he should be restricted though. Um, unless if I just totally misread that situation. So let's see if he's restricted. I guess I should check that out. So it does say he's restricted. So we'll see what he ends up doing. So he is going to accept his qualifying offer. Okay, so Darren Fox, I assume, is like an 89 now. Uh, not quite. He's an 87. Still solid, though. Wiggins up to an 87. We got four or three 87s. Or no, sorry, I missed right. Oh, Gordon went up to an 87. Fox is an 85. Wow, okay. That's fantastic. So Aaron Gordon, I did not expect Aaron Gordon to develop this much. But hey, I'll absolutely take that. Tosh Jones up to an 80. I mean, like I said, man, I think this next season, we were very close last year. I think this year, I think we could win the championship. The terrific season that we just had in this season number four. I assume, I was about to say, I'm assuming we got coach of the year and we got executive of the year as well. 64 and 18 for Sean Tucker and 64 and 18 for Tom Thibodeau as coach of the year. Uh, we do get Carly Towns being an all NBA second team this time around instead of just all NBA third team. Here's an all offensive team. Uh, so yeah, very, very fun team. And we are the first team in the West, like I kind of figured we would be. So here are your player stats. 24 from Cat, yeah, 19 and a half from Levine, 16 from Wiggins, 15 from Fox, 14 from Gordon, and uh, 10 from Rondell Sheverson, 8 from Tyus Jones, and 5 from Mason Plumley. So now it's time to figure out if we're going to go win a championship this year. So you have a 91 Jimmy Butler. Obviously, Jimmy came to this team, uh, Minnesota. Things did not work out very well at all. They end up trading him to Philly, uh, if I remember correctly, because he went from Minnesota to Philly, right? Isn't that exactly? Yeah, to Philly for like Darius Sarge and Robert Covington or something like that. So, somebody come around against Dallas, and hopefully Jimmy Butler doesn't... All right, well, if we're about to lose Jimmy Butler in round one, I'm going to you know, be a little a little tilted, not going to lie. We're the, you know, they're the eighth seed, we're the first seed. Can 2K put a little respect on our names after we just went 64 and 18? Like, is that a thing they could do for us? I hate this game, bro. Bro, like, how many times am I going to lose to an eighth seed, bro? This shit is just so damn annoying. Like, how did this team beat me? They have freaking Justin Patton starting at center. Man, it's kind of going off, not going to lie. But holy moly, bro. Like, how often do AFC seeds actually win like that? We just get beat in six like that. I'm just going to run this thing right back. Last season, next year. If things don't go well next year, then I'll just give up. But as I told you, we're just running this season right back and hoping that this time we don't get bounced in round one. So here we are into the season stats. You had Cat with 25, 18 for Levine. 17 for Fox, 15 for Wiggins, and 14 from Aaron Gordon. So we get Phoenix in round one. Denver's on the other side of the bracket, thankfully. But James Harden, Tatum is a really, and Noah's Dwell, not a bad Phoenix team. You know, weirdly enough, if we get beaten round one, I guess I wouldn't be too surprised. But we are going to beat them in five. Okay, now we get San Antonio, who we beat pretty easily earlier. But doesn't mean that's going to be what happens again. But we're going to beat them in five. Okay. And now we draw Denver. So this is the third time in a row where we face Denver. Not in a row, I guess. We do face Denver. So they have an 87 Blake Beasley. They added Blake Griffin as well. Okay. I mean, Blake, um, Blake Beasley playing small forward is disgusting, but they go up one to zero. So I don't know. They we even it up. We're up two to one. Can we go up three to one? No, it's even series. Okay, so an even series. Game five in Denver. What could possibly go wrong here? We have the lead right now. They're gonna take it back. And they're going to run away with it. So we are going to lose to Denver. And I think Denver is going to be the team that just beats us constantly. And we're never going to win today. So I thought with the team we threw together that we might win this thing. Uh, we are going to force a game seven, it looks like, though. So maybe I shouldn't give up just yet. About to give my giving up speech. But we are still in it. So now we got a game seven. So game seven in Denver to go on to the NBA Finals. We start off hot in the first quarter. But it looks like... Denver is, well, it's a close one. So I keep trying to give up, but we're making strides. Can we keep this lead? It is going to be a close game seven, but Denver is going to start to run away with it. And Denver is going to be the reason why we do not win a championship today. They, we just couldn't beat Jokic today. Simply. It's just that simple. Um, unfortunately. So with that being said, I'm going to end it there. Uh, last year sucked because we got bounced by an eighth seed and we get to a conference finals. And we can't beat Denver for anything. I mean, they had Blake Griffin next to Jokic. Like, what, what were we supposed to do? So, I like the roster we threw together. Uh, I think, you know, losing to the AFC last year put a bad taste in my mouth. And I was just like, this is the last season no matter what. So, fortunately, we do not end this video in a championship, which really sucks. Because I thought together, you know, I thought we threw together a really good team. But ultimately, it doesn't work out. So, I'm going to end it there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see y'all in the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying...
Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.